This special is a presentation of Sinclair Cares. Every child deserves a chance in life, but right now millions of children are behind. The number here really astonishing. 25 million children in the U.S. cannot read proficiently, which is why we launched a Sinclair Cares partnership with Reading is Fundamental. I'm Angela Brown with the National Desk, and welcome to the Sinclair Cares Supporting Children's Literacy Special. We are on a critical mission here to help get more books into the hands of children to improve their reading skills. Reading is Fundamental is the nation's leading children's literacy nonprofit. It has proven programs and resources to tackle the literacy crisis, and we're teaming up with the nonprofit on a virtual book drive. Throughout this special, you're gonna see a QR code on your screen, just scan it to make a donation. Every dollar counts. In fact, just a $4 donation provides a child with a new book. So let's get started. We begin with Shannon Lilly in Baltimore at Billy Holiday Elementary School. They say it takes a village. One, two, three, you. And inside Billy Holiday Elementary. One more story. Yeah. <laughs> it's a holiday gathering of sorts for young readers. The rabbit is hiding in the grass. This is a place where dreams can soar. Move your balloon really good. Ready? Inhale. And kids can be their own life's author. Now you can make your own story from beginning to end. And it's a sense of community. Hey, Swan. Driving it all. <laughs> hey girl. Dean of Students Brandon Canyon remembers going through his own Books for Ownership program years ago. My first book was James and the Giant Peach, and that, that just encouraged me to dream bigger. Now he's sharing that experience Give me five. with his tiny friend. Ah, just... It's all part of a decades old program put on by the national nonprofit. Reading is fundamental. You ready to get your book? Let's go get your book. Come on. Since 1966, Creating the joy of reading is what we're all about. The group Pushing for Literacy, funded by the Baltimore Community Foundation to continue the tradition here. And you get any three books you want. Any three. Yeah. <laughs> and this year, at this Baltimore City School alone, they're handing out free books for 260 pre-K to second graders. Good job. Just like Swan. Good job. Yes. From my perspective, what we just saw was that first spark in the kids to think and explore and dream. A spark. Everything centers around literacy. You're blue. That just like this friendship. There we go. Canyon hopes. Is that okay? Only grows. I'm Shannon Lilly in Baltimore. Hey, come on, girl. For Sinclair Cares. <laughs> And I'd like to give a warm welcome to Alicia Levy, the president and CEO of Reading is Fundamental. Alicia, I really appreciate you being here today to talk about this very critical issue. And really, Alicia, when I think about it, your, um, your mission is in your name. Well, it absolutely is. Reading is fundamental. And thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for raising this critically important issue. Every child should be able to read. And we're doing it really at a critical time for so many children. Absolutely. Who are maybe falling behind because of COVID and they need that little bit extra push. They really do. And I think that for reading is fundamental, we focus on joy. We focus mm -hmm. on the joy of reading, the possibilities that reading provides for children. You're more likely to do something if you enjoy it. And so um, there is a crisis in this country. 25 million children in this country are not reading at a proficient level. And so we're focused on ensuring that every child can read. And you know, uh, you talk about 25 million children, but one book can make a big difference because so many kids, they don't even have one book in the house. That's right, 61% of children living under the poverty line in this country do not have a book in their home. Can you imagine? No. The first thing I did when I had my children, I bought them a book. I have 17 nieces and nephews. The first thing I did when they were born, I bought them a book. And those books are things that create community in the home. The, you're, child's first educator is a parent, right? Reading a story aloud is such an important part of getting a child prepared to go to school. And books are an important part of helping a child learn how to read. You know, a lot of people can't fathom that number because they think, oh, there are schools, there are libraries, but a lot of people just don't have access to that reading material. I think that's right. And I think we all saw it. All of us that, that had children through COVID, that experienced COVID, and we all experienced COVID, we saw the struggles that children had in, in learning remotely and importantly, consuming the information that they needed to. If you cannot read, you cannot learn. And by the time you enter fourth grade, if you're not reading at a proficient level, 
you're gonna struggle. After fourth grade, you read to learn. Before fourth grade, you learn to read. And you talk about the long-term impacts of that. When you reach that end of third grade, beginning of fourth grade period, you are not proficient in reading. It can lead to so many um, detrimental outcomes, whether it's you know increasing the chances of not graduating from high school or even going to jail. There's so many different outcomes that could happen, which is why reading is just simply so crucial. Well, isn't that the truth? Think about this just in your everyday lives. If you can't read, and you're in society, you can't read a prescription bottle. Mm -hmm. You can't read a menu. You can't read a road sign. Reading is a fundamental building block to not just to learn, but to survive and to thrive. And also for the NAEP test as well. Well, that's exactly right. NAEP, the nation's report mm -hmm. card. Who hasn't held their breath when they're getting their report right. card at home, right? And NAEP measures reading proficiency for fourth and eighth graders, but COVID exacerbated those challenges and we have to double down. This is a problem that we can solve. Every child can learn to read. There's no question about that. And what parent doesn't want their child to be able to read? It's yeah. So it's a problem we can solve, and I am so grateful that we're talking about it. And you were part of that solution. Well, reading is fundamental for over 55 years, has absolutely been part of the solution. We are dedicated to ensuring that every child in America has the opportunity to read, but lives in a community that makes reading a priority. Creating a culture of literacy in communities and homes across the country is central to our mission. Now, your mission, of course, um, you provide books. For we children. do. We provide books and literacy resources, um, tips for parents, uh, resources for educators. Our goal is to ensure that people, that children see possibilities in reading. We want them to want to pick up a book. We want them to see themselves and their experiences in books that they might select. We also want them to experience what others experience in books. And that seems to be the big question, at least for a lot of folks, is how to get kids interested, how to make reading fun. Any tips here? Well, for sure. <laughs> lots, <laughs> lots of ideas on how to make reading fun. And I, I believe that if you're interested in something, you're more likely to continue to do it. So what do you do? You make sure that, that children see an opportunity to read everywhere. Again, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be a hardcover book. We live in a digital society. I was ha having a conversation with somebody recently and they said, this is Gen AI. This generation of learners are going to use technology to enable learning in, in ways we can't even imagine. And I think that that's true. So reading has to be available to a child in any format, in any setting, in any way. And how do you engage that child? You make sure it's something they can relate to. Do you know our most popular book is about sharks. Really? Yes. LeBron James, I promise, another really popular one. Um, but sharks, kids see that. It's gender neutral. It is just a, something that kids love. Now you talk about um, reaching um, students, kids on technology, but you're also competing against technology. You know, so many kids have iPhones, they have iPads, they have all these devices. How do you kind of uh, work together to try to take them, their eyes away from maybe that iPhone and get them back into that book? Well, I believe you can't put that genie back in the bottle. Mm -hmm. So instead of t trying to take them away from platforms that they love, harness those platforms, leverage those tools, and find ways on those tools to make sure they have a reason to want to read. And you have parents that play really a critical role here. Parents are always play a critical role. And what parent doesn't want their child to be able to read? What parent doesn't want what's best for their child? And so engaging parents in the solution is absolutely part of our mission. You know, a, a part of your mission obviously is to get more kids reading, but for you personally, I'm sure um, it's fulfilling. I mean, what drives you every day to get out here and try to promote RI at RIF and to help kids um, gain better reading skills? Well, how lucky am I? Mm -hmm. How lucky am I to work on an issue that brings joy to people every day? When I first started at Reading is Fundamental, the first phone call I made was to my mom because she had saved a picture of me Re winning the Battle of the Books in Central Illinois, where I grew up um, in fourth grade. I wake up every day and I think I am doing good work if I make sure that one child sees opportunity in the power of reading. You know, a lot of people think it takes, you have to do a lot to help, um, but you can do something simple, just a few dollars could help 
one child even more. Well, absolutely. We're a nonprofit. Reading is fundamental as a nonprofit, and we operate on um, engaging people in our cause. So every donation goes to making sure that children in this country have the opportunity to read. And when you talk about those donations, someone watching right now, um, what do you have to say to those folks who may be sitting on the fence, maybe thinking I can give a little bit of money, how their money would help a child? Every dollar helps a child, and every dollar is a dollar toward the solution. Every dollar you donate to RIF helps us ensure that we have a nation of lifelong readers and we're creating joy for children in communities nationwide. So your dollar goes a long way. And this really does go a long way because so many kids simply don't have one book in the household. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. I have the pleasure of, of engaging with children in communities across the country. We do read alouds in classrooms. We do family engagement nights um, in, in faith-based, community-based organizations. Um, we do book celebration events at schools. I have never been to an event where a child hasn't come up to me and said thank you and asked me if they could have an extra book for a sibling at home. And quickly, the difference you're seeing. There's a, we make a difference every day. We make a difference every day because we empower children to want to read and they are on a pathway if they can read to learn and grow. Thank you so much, Alicia, for joining us and the work your organization does. Thank you. And I'm joined now by Jack Ramondi, the chairman of the board for Reading is Fundamental. Welcome, Jack. How are you? Good morning. Thank you for having me. Pleasure well, to be here. We're glad you're here. Uh, you know, I was doing a little bit of research on you, and two years ago, you posted something on LinkedIn was, that was quite inspiring. You said, I'm proud to share that Reading is Fundamental has helped 100 million children get access to books and literacy education over 56 years. That is yes. so, yes, yeah, so many children you've helped. Um, and that was two years ago, and you helped even more. Why the focus on literacy? Why is that so important? Well, I think it's in our name, right? Reading is mm -hmm. fundamental. And for um, children to succeed in today's world, particularly in an in increasingly digital world, uh, being able to read uh, and read to not just read for fun, but read to learn um, is critically important. Now, how do you offer that support um, when it comes to a child's reading journey? So one of the most um, startling data points is how many children don't have books of their own in their homes. And that is something that RIF is uh, very much focused on. It's it's being able to give books to children that they can keep as their own. And when you go to like a reading uh, book, dis a reading is fundamental book distribution event, and you see the eyes light up and sparkle when the kids learn that they are able to keep these books and bring them home and call them their own, uh, it's, it's so important. Now at RIF, we don't teach children how to read, but we do try to install a joy of reading uh, give, by giving them books and helping them understand or experience, I guess is the better word, uh, experience um, what they can learn through books. They can be someplace else. They can learn about a different culture. They can learn about different animals. Uh, they can learn about STEM. Uh, related uh, activities. All of this is made possible by the fact that we are distributing books for free to children um, who really don't have access to books in their own home today. You know, that is the key part for a lot of families is for free because um, a lot of people may not have the money for books. And also you talk about children without having books in the home, something like 61% of kids below the poverty line, uh, they don't have a single book at home. So your organization kind of bridges that gap and provides those one book because it takes one book really that they can make a big difference in a child's life. That's correct. And, you know, even, even we, we oftentimes think of libraries as being available to children. But for many people in rural areas or even in cities, getting to the library is uh, both time consuming and expensive uh, with the cost of transportation. And so having books in their home that they can call their own um, is just is so important to really bring about that joy of reading and create, hopefully, what is lifelong readers and transition from reading learning to read to reading to learn. And that's an important point here because you are all over, rural communities, urban centers. You're literally in every section of the country helping kids or providing kids with these books to read, which is very important. Right, that's right. And we, we go where we're needed. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think probably the, the biggest um, uh, obstacle we have is the financial resources to be able to reach all students. So one of the important aspects of what we try to do is is 
communicate our message and create um, um, donors support for our program so that we can continue to increase the reach uh, that we have each and every year. You know, that's obviously one reason why we're sitting here today to, to motivate people to give to such an amazing cause. And, you know, Riff, as I just mentioned, been around for a very long time. Uh, what is your, uh, your, your model that has withstood the test of time that's allowed you to succeed all of these years? Well, I, I think when you when you think about who we serve, children, uh, it's a universally accepted um, group of, of individuals that people get excited about helping. And uh, I think when you're talking about pr providing books uh, to create uh, and, and uh, develop a joy of reading, it's also something that's very um, widely supported. And I think in today's world where everything is so divisive, um, reading and uh, helping children read, providing access to books, free books, and is something that is uncontroversial and widely uh, accepted. But I think the most important thing that we do is, is that, you know, reading skills and teaching of reading, uh, the methodologies change each and every time. Just think about the, uh, the return to phonics that seems to be happening in the marketplace today. Um, one of the things that is universal and makes Riff so, um, uh, its model so, uh, so stable and so, uh, so much needed uh, through all types of environments is that we are providing books for free books that the children get to choose. We don't mm -hmm. choose the books for them. They get to choose the books that are most interesting to them. Uh, we think that leads to an increase uh, in participation in reading. And uh, that is something that is universal, whether it's 30 years ago or today or 30 years into the future. You know, you talk about the impact, I'm sure you've seen personally the impact at some of these book events, the expression on the kids' faces, uh, heard stories of improvement. Uh, could you share some of that with us? Yes, so um, as part of my um, involvement with RIF, I regularly attend um, book distribution events. Uh, sometimes uh, I get to actually read aloud uh, to children, which is uh, super exciting. Um, you see their participation, the smiles on their faces. And then afterwards, you can uh, roam around with the, with the children and um, help them find the book that speaks to them. Uh, that's super, uh, super powerful. And, you know, what a, what a strong, motivational, um, satisfying um, uh, event to witness uh, each time. My wife and I have also supported uh, RIF events um, at different schools where we sponsor uh, programs like Read for Success to uh, help uh, the schools create a, um, a re an impactful reading program for their children. And hopefully uh, through these programs, uh, we've seen over the years, reading scores actually increase for students. And that is something that is also uh, critically important in today's uh, today's okay. environment. You read my mind, that was my next question. Is that's what is desperately re needed right now for reading scores to, to go up, especially post COVID and what, when a lot of scores dipped and you're seeing real results here. That's right. I mean, it's COVID, the impact of COVID had obviously so many different devastating um, consequences for people across the country. But one of the things that we saw is that reading scores nationwide actually declined and they declined um, even at higher levels in uh, communities that are have less advantages, right? Less resources uh, available to them. So anything we can do at RIF to help reverse that is something that we're very focused on. And our programs like book distribution events or um, a reading program called Read for Success are programs that have empirical data that show um, that they support children's reading skills and in some instances, the Read for Success programs, for example, have wide scale uh, empirical data that show reading scores increasing um, during summer months, which is something that doesn't happen almost anywhere. You're right. And, and, and quickly, um, you kind of just mentioned how, what keeps you committed to RIF. Why should someone watching today maybe donate or get involved? Well, I think our, you know, if you if you look for a society that works together, if you work, you want a society where there are equitable opportunities for all children. I mean, these are the types of things that reading it uh, is fundamental, helps support. If you can't read, it's very difficult to participate in today's economy and today's workforce. So, like our name says, reading is fundamental. Well, thank you so much for all you do, and thank you so much for joining us today, Jack. My, my pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. 
61% of U.S. children living at or below the poverty line do not have any books at home. And a recent study found that one in three children entering kindergarten lack the basic skills they need to learn to read. But you can help right now. A $4 donation will provide one new book to a child. A $20 donation will provide five books. Every dollar will make a difference, so please go to SinclairCares.com or scan the QR code on your screen to make a donation so that more children can experience a love of reading. The fun thing about it is that sometimes in reading, like when you're reading a, like a chapter book, you can manage to put like mental pictures in your head about what's going on and also like you can picture it in your head. Welcome back to our Sinclair Cares Supporting Children's Literacy Special. Our partners at Reading is Fundamental are working to change the trajectory of the alarming U.S. literacy crisis, which creates barriers between our nation's children and their opportunities. Since 1966, Reading is Fundamental has provided nearly 430 million books and reading resources to more than 160 million children. Now, we continue from San Antonio, where David Chancellor reports from Joseph Hopkins Elementary School. Reading is... For decades, that phrase ended with the word fundamental. But to students at Hopkins Elementary in San Antonio, reading is so much more. When you're at home, what do you, uh, when do you read? Mostly when I'm stressed out. Oh, okay. I like that. Why? It just calms me down because then I get to read interesting things and stuff like that. Part comfort, part happiness. Reading is all that with hope sprinkled in. It's why every spring, the library at Hopkins gives out three new books to each student from each grade. I like to do big events where the kids, the kids get to come and choose their books all together as a class. It builds that reading community and that joy of this is exciting, this is fun. You're going to get three free books today. Yes. Are you excited? The want and the need are both there. There aren't a lot of bookstores anywhere close to our school. so. Um, we have kids whose parents don't have a car. They don't leave the community. They don't leave the area. Um, there's no place to go to get something to read. These books are for you. What kind of books do you like to read? Mythology. Oh, you're into mythology. I just like to read big books. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like how big? Um, I don't really know, but I just like to read chapter books. You just like to read, huh? So, mythology books, anything else that we're looking for today? Murder mystery. What? What? <laughs> How old are you? Would you rather watch TV or read books? Oh, the right answer is read books. <laughs> That's going to be a hard decision. Touche, but an open book can spark something that not even TV can fully reach in a child, their imagination. Reading opens up a new world for the kids. It exposes them to new things. I have kids in my class who want to be scuba divers and who want to work in the Eiffel Tower when they grow up. Just because we've learned about it, we've read about it. I just love encouraging the joy of reading because I want our kids to see how big the world can be. So when you read um, books for pleasure, books for fun, and informational books too, you can just kind of see so much more of the world. In San Antonio, David Chancellor, Sinclair Cares. Now let's turn to a longtime educator, Nakia Jarrett, has taught first grade since 2001 and is a school library media specialist in DC Public Schools. Welcome, Nakia. Thank you so much for joining us. Hello, how are you today? Good. Now you obviously have a wealth of knowledge here, but when we look at what's happening in our schools across the countries, and the numbers here just are so staggering, 25 million students um, not reading proficiently. What are you seeing? Because you teach kids from K through five. Why is this happening? Well, it's really important to start the reading at home. Um, school is amazing, but if we start reading at home, especially from birth and in the, in the womb, then we'll realize and understand that even students one, two years old, or children one to two years old, even if they're reading a book upside down, they're mm -hmm. still reading. It's making sure that students have books 
and library and, and literacy resources in their hand. You know, this is where reading is fundamental really comes in. And one thing that I know you promote is these at-home libraries that obviously reading is fundamental to help you in the classroom and then you're promoting this for parents at home as well. Yes. Um, reading is fundamental is so amazing. I've been fortunate enough that all seasons they've been able to provide books for my students and books for students within the community, not just the students that I teach. Um, I can set up a table and put a riff banner up and people will come over and ask, are these books free? And I think that it's important to have more pop-ups and have more places that people can actually have the free resources. And Reading is Fundamental has helped me with that. You know, when we look at um, learning laws post-COVID, and when we see test scores dropping, yes. often in um, lower income communities, often in minority, more minority communities, urban communities, what can we do um, with programs like RIF to kind of cultivate a culture of reading yes. and to kind of turn these situations around? And so that's my goal within my community as well as outside of my community. Um, is to develop a culture of reading. That's the most important part. If you start from young or Say if I have a new student that just started at my school. I introduce myself. Hello, my name is Miss Jarrett, your favorite librarian. What books do you like to read? Oh, I don't like to read books. Well, what do you like? So I make sure I ask them either, do they like to read or what do they like? And I'll find a way to make sure they find a book to read. You know, you talk about you work with kids K through uh, the fifth grade, right? Yes. And there's so many uh, studies out that say that once you hit the third grade, if you're not reading it, level proficiency, it increases the chances of dropping out of school, yes. um, you know, uh, maybe even going to jail. How do you relay that to your students, to their parents, in order to boost uh, reading skills for these young people? Well, especially in third grade, I have some wonderful third grade students. It's a large class size in both classes, but being able to have the opportunity to have taught them at a younger age, um, not all the time they want to read. Um, this is the time where they like to read fiction. But I also explain to them that sometimes reading is not as fun as you want it to be, but you can gain knowledge that will help you. One of my biggest things is telling students, if you read that periodical, if you read that nonfiction information, you can teach your parents. <laughs> they, they like say? to teach their <laughs> parents. You know, they want to be the boss, right? But I think through reading, it allows you to educate others. And that's what is important for third grade and up. You just tell me like the fundamentals here in terms of like you're an educator, if you're a parent, if you want to get involved with RIF, if you want to get these books um, into your home or into your classroom, how do you do that? Oh, well, it's, it's not that easy, but having um, professional relationships and um, being able to explain and advocate what RIF has done for my students throughout the years mm -hmm. has allowed me that if I see an email from RIF, reading is fundamental, I am checking that email so fast and making sure that I have the opportunity within my community and my school to have um, those books. And what do you think? How do you think RIF has made a difference, at least in D.C. public schools? RIF has made a difference in D.C. public schools. Um, I've had an opportunity to go to the RIF office downtown D.C. Um, to receive free books for my students. And I had my suitcases that I usually travel with, my largest bags, and they've told me, you can choose as many books as possible. And I would stuff my suitcase <laughs> full of books. And this was during the uh, you know, winter break. Right. And someone asked, are you going on vacation? I said, oh no, this bag is full of books. And my students were able to receive books um, for the holiday so that their reading wouldn't stop during the break. And you know what? That's very important to keep that re reading going and very important the work you're doing. Thank you so much for joining us, Nakia. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. I'm joined now by Sue Brady, a reading specialist at Heritage Middle School in Lansing, Illinois, now in her 43rd year of teaching. Hi, Sue. Hi, Angela. How are you? Good. You know, we've had a really good conversation earlier just regarding um, your role in helping students Many students who are fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth graders who come to you and they're behind in reading. Mm -hmm. What is the impact of that? How do you catch them up, especially when you think of COVID and learning loss? 
It's sometimes it's very difficult to catch students up, especially at this age. But what I try to do is keep it fun, keep it motivating. And I found a really good way to do that is just get them excited about reading. Try to find that one good book that is going to make them go, yes, this is the book I've been waiting for. But also to keep my lessons short, mm. because as we discussed earlier, attention spans are short due to social media, COVID, other things. And you've got to just keep the pace, keep it short and have something ready to keep going. But one thing that I found really helps is using graphic novels. Mm -hmm. It really helps to get their interest because graphic novels to them, it's almost like a comic book, but there are so many wonderful, well-written graphic novels out there. And once you can catch their interest with that, you can get them to go into a chapter book or something else. So I love to start. So graphic novels, one tip. Now, one thing that's interesting, I'm looking at your classroom, you have messages mm -hmm. there. And you talk about, you're in a competition really with TikTok, with, um, so you are, to get so short attention span and get kids interested. And it's um, even evident when I look at your classroom because you have messages out mm -hmm. there, just in your classroom to inspire kids to read. Do you think they're soaking all of this in? I certainly hope so. And I have a reading club at school with my fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. We meet twice a week. We discuss books. We're actually reading the Super Teacher Project right now. And just to keep them going. And one thing we do after they read books on their own on my Instagram page, the kids hold up a book and they tell what was good about that book or what they really didn't like about that book. We're very honest and we call them our book recommendations. So uh, kids follow my Instagram and they can get ideas for good books to read. Now you're in the front lines here, you're in the classroom. Um, the importance of reading um, for students, how do you see it materialize in their lives later on, the ones who do read proficiently and the ones who do not? It's sad because as much as we try to keep the kid or catch the children up. It doesn't always happen, but we just have to keep emphasizing that reading, you need to read to be successful in life. And as we discussed earlier, Angela, reading really starts in the home. Mm -hmm. I was brought up by parents who read to me every single day and I had books all over my house. And when kids come into my office here, they see books everywhere. And I try to show that to the parents that just read, read, read. You are your child's first teacher. Get them excited about books. Take them to the library. Make it a big event like, oh my gosh, you're going to the library today. You know, we're going to get your first library card. Make it special for them. Make them enjoy reading. Now, one thing we obviously reading is fundamental is crucial for a lot of these. Yeah, I see you shaking your head. How has it Definitely. made a difference for you? How do you use in the classroom? We are using it as book giveaways. Reading is fundamental is just awesome. It's one of the best things that I ever ran across. And luckily, I was able to hook up with them. This is my second year with them. I have one more year to go. And they send me books, boxes and boxes and boxes of books. And we give those away to the children for free. They there's absolutely no charge for these books. They come into my room and they just get to look at all the wonderful books and pick. And a lot of the kids say to me, can't I get more than one? And unfortunately, I have to say, no, sweetheart, you can't. You can only get one book. But there is one little girl that when she came and chose her book this year, she goes, oh, Mrs. Brady, it's like Christmas for me to get my own book. Because so, a lot of the kids don't have books at home. So that really melted my heart when so she said that. These free books from Riff, the kids mm -hmm. are excited about getting these books. Yes. They want these books. Definitely, definitely. And what's really cool about it is my reading club. They stay after school the night before we pass out the books and they get to see all the books firsthand and put them on my tables. And I let them have first crack at the books. And they're like, oh, yay, we get first crack at the books. They get so excited. And you see reading improve? Yes, they do. I do for a lot, not for all, unfortunately, but I do for many of them. Because it's, it's for some of them, it's the first time they've owned their own book. So, Thank and a you. lot of the parents don't have time or the resources to get them to the library, which is sad, but understandable. So at least they have, they'll get three books that they can call their very own. Well, thank you so much for the job you're doing, Sue, and thank you so much for thank being you. here. Thank you. Of course.
Did you know one in three children entering kindergarten lack the basic skills they need to learn how to read, and 67% of fourth graders read below grade level, setting them up for difficulty in school and beyond. If you donate just $4, a child will receive a new book, and $20 donation will provide five books, all to help a child enjoy the gift of reading. Please go to SinclairCares.com or scan the QR code on your screen to make a donation. Every dollar counts. Please help if you can. There's a lot of books that can be relatable to their problems in real life, and not even just problems, but like things that they feel like they like or can relate to. Welcome back to our Sinclair Care Supporting Children's Literacy Special. Reading as fundamental studies have shown that giving children choice and access to their own new age appropriate books is positively tied to improving reading behaviors, writing performance, language development, and academic performance in other subjects. A $4 donation provides a new book to a child. We continue now in Nashville with Amanda Chen. By 2023, Abigail of Middle Tennessee began reading on her grade level, a 14-level increase from where she began. That's because she began participating in the YMCA Y Literacy Program in 2019. Literacy is so important and so powerful, right? There are very few gifts that you can give that last a lifetime, but literacy is one of them and a great education. And if you want to have a great education, that begins with the ability to read well. That's the foundation of all other academic success. That's just one example of how the Dollar General Literacy Foundation helps students learn to read specifically by partnering with nonprofits all across the country. The foundation, started by Dollar General's co-founder, who was functionally illiterate, also supports schools and libraries and their efforts to increase access to literacy programming. So far, the foundation has invested more than $230 million in programs and has helped more than 20 million people of all ages. When you open doorways that help people learn to read, bright futures happen, great things start to happen. And so there's a lot of power in literacy and education. So we hope other people will get as excited about it as we are and join in the movement. But that's not all. The Dollar General Literacy Foundation teamed up with Discover Education and the National After School Association to create Discover Literacy, a program to support the development of literacy skills for children in kindergarten through second grade. The program offers teachers, students, and caregivers access to in-school and after-school digital resources at no cost. It's going to take all of us to get our students to the grade level they need to be successful. It's going to take all of us equipping our teachers so that they can help their students be successful. While the foundation has been able to put more than 2 million books into the hands of children across 16 states through Reading is Fundamental, the program is far from done. Reporting from Nashville, I'm Amanda Chin for Sinclair Cares. I'm joined now by Dr. Darius McGinnis, an assistant professor of literacy at Westchester University of Pennsylvania. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. You know, many students right now are facing a crisis when it comes in, to education. Um, students in black and brown communities already behind before COVID and then COVID hit. Some of those students are now even more behind. What are we going to do to try to close that gap, especially when it comes to reading? I think the first thing that we have to do is to recognize how complex this issue is, particularly in the ways in which we define what a learning loss is, um, what have we actually lost, what was happening before COVID uh, hit, and the ways in which families have already been supporting their kids outside of school. I think that this presents an opportunity for us to reimagine what parental and family engagement looks like going forward, particularly as we look at the different disparities um, throughout black and brown communities. When you say reimagined, what does that look like in terms of books in the home, programs like RIF? What will that take on? I think having a very nuanced and critical perspective on collaborative frameworks that bridge the gap between home and school. Mm -hmm. So considering the ways in which we engage our families uh, to bring them to have a seat at the table to talk about what uh, has worked for their kids at home and what we can do in our curriculum and pedagogy and in different support 
efforts for the parents uh, to think about what this reimagination can sort of uh, could manifest. And when you talk about the curriculum, especially uh, black and brown communities and the declines that we've been seeing in achievement, what can we do when we look at curriculum, when we do when reading, what do you think needs to be done? I think the first thing that has to be done is we need to look at the ways that schools have been funded. I think that um, these issues have been longstanding before COVID. I think I also believe that uh, Black and brown families throughout the United States have dealt with different things outside of school that have impacted their education. So we need to look at ways to support the families with regard to employment, to think about the ways to support them with, with health care, with, uh, with jobs, with food, with, with stable housing. But as an educator, as someone in the education field, are you worried? I mean, because when you look at the scores, um, you know, during COVID, the, the big drop and having to catch so many students up, can that be made up? Or are we looking at a future that will always be behind? I think that, well, one, I'm, I'm an optimist. Mm -hmm. So I'm a person who I believe in the resilience and the brilliance of uh, black and brown folks um, throughout the world. And <clears throat> I know that I know that people have the best interest for their kids. What worries me, quite honestly, is that I believe that people are going to go full speed ahead um, and forget that our children are dealing with much more than just not performing at a predicted level on a standardized test. I believe that our children are dealing with some mental health issues that need to be addressed. I think that our kids are dealing with confidence issues that need to be addressed. And again, these things have been longstanding even before the pandemic has happened. And I'm hoping that schools, research, institutions, and organizations um, continue uh, to create pathways that address address these issues. And we hope for the same thing. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. McGinnis. We appreciate having you in studio. Thank you for having me. Next, I'd like to welcome Lauren Wagman, the executive director of Ready, Set, Read, based in Los Angeles. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Angela. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, thanks for being here. And you know what? what? First of all, I just love the name, Ready, Set, Read. It gets you motivated action to get out there, pull up a book, maybe for your child. Tell me more about this program. Absolutely. Thank you for calling attention to the name. We want children to be ready to read and we want families to be ready to read. So our work here in Los Angeles has been continuous over the past 25 years. We have been supporting families in communities by providing abundant access to new diverse books to build children's home libraries as well as providing workshops for families that really shine a light on the important role that parents, grandparents, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, the whole family can get involved in building reading routines and really laying the foundation for children's early learning. Our focus is on children ages zero to five because we know children are born ready to learn and we want to promote kindergarten readiness so that children uh, are school ready for future school learning and lifelong learning as well. You know, there's a lot of data out there that uh, many kids start kindergarten, they are not ready. So your program in many ways can bridge that gap. That's, you're focusing on kids uh, ages uh, zero to five. How are you doing it specifically? Yeah, th thank you. So we partner with early education centers across Los Angeles. It's a broad geography of about 720 square miles and we have about 90 early ed center school partners. So these are preschools serving children, primarily ages two to five, mm -hmm. some serve infants as well. And we work with educators at the school sites, including principals, to provide them with Ready, Set, Read curriculum. And so this is three workshops that they are then empowered to deliver to families at the school site. The workshops happen three times a year. Families come to the school site learning about the important role they play in their children's early learning and development, the importance of reading routines, and also everyday interactions that they have with young children that build up that language learning, the vocabulary, um, 
and the readiness to uh, have exposure to books. And at the end of each workshop, we provide families and children with the opportunity to choose books to take home to build their home libraries. You talked earlier about, you know, getting parents involved more and the whole concept of having this home library. Um, how mm -hmm. do you get that off the ground, at least help parents get their own home library off the ground? Yeah, so Ready, Set, Read really takes it, you know, upon ourselves to distribute an abundance of books. Each year, we're distributing approximately 40,000 to 50,000 new, um, beautiful stories, you know, diverse books, often bilingual, into um, the school settings for parents and children to choose at the end of their workshops. And so over the course of the year, children have the opportunity, you know, to select ready set read books to build their home library with these books and parents love the opportunity you know to see their children of course feel joy in choosing the books building that library and it really does kind of begin this virtuous cycle of them returning for you know additional parent learning and um, additional opportunities for children to choose those books and add to their libraries over time well, it seems like a uh, final question here, just about partnerships and partnering with RIF and other organizations, big difference? Absolutely. I think, you know, children's literacy is such a big um, issue and it takes all of us uh, to play a role. So I've talked about the parents and, you know, the grandparents and the, the family, but more broadly, yes, Ready, Set, Read is partnered here locally with the school district and then nationally. Reading is Fundamental has just played a tremendous role in offering resources for families and for educators that Ready, Set, Read is able to call upon to bolster our work and bolster our impact as well. Well, Lauren, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Angela, my pleasure. Take care. Like when I was younger, I used to uh, get bullied a lot about like physical features. And when I got home, I used to cry and stuff and then my mom was like it's okay and then she was like okay you can have a few minutes for yourself so i just picked up a book and i was able to escape from reality you know one of the goals here is to find effective strategies to encourage a love of reading and children i'm being joined by becky Zalesnik, the executive director of innovative programs for Sheldon ISD, a Title I 6A district in Houston, Texas, where she's been an educator for 34 years. And Dr. Erin Bailey is the director of literacy and content with Reading is Fundamental, and she's based in San Diego, California. Welcome to you both. Thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you for having us. And Becky, let's start with you. Um, let's talk about the resources here because that's uh, crucial in this situation and support that, that schools need to help reduce the number of students that are below the correct reading level in elementary schools. What resource do you, resources do you think that these schools need? Well, the basic resources that we could start with is just when you talk about coming from a, a, a low economics uh, home, you need books in the home and that's not usually a priority on the spending uh, you know, you're taking care of the, the immediate needs. So having books at the house where students get to read for pleasure, sometimes just for escape from reality at, at times, but uh, having those books at the house where the kids can take some books home and keep them even, and have a priority uh, of reading at the house that could be reinforced through the parents and with the schools, and even having books at the school in the classroom libraries. We shouldn't always read just for a purpose, meaning for school. Right. Kids need to read for enjoyment. When you struggle reading, the worst thing could be is that I'm forced to read, not reading for something that I choose to read for enjoyment. And the earlier, the better in these situations for students. And we keep hearing a recurring theme here is that RIF can provide parents with books so they can build these home libraries. Yes. Now, Dr. Bailey, um, how does RIF define the joy of reading? Because I think this is very a very important component here because you not only want kids to read, you have to inspire them um, to enjoy reading so that they will continue reading and even picking up that first book. Why is this a crucial part of a child's reading journey? Yes, absolutely. And I love what you said about enjoyment. Uh, for mm -hmm. us, joy doesn't always have to be enjoyment. A math teacher said it best to me, actually. Um, you can find joy in completing a very rigorous math problem. Uh, so RIF breaks down joy into three components. Motivation, which we define as your self-concept. How do you see yourself as a reader? And value. What value do you place on reading? How do you see the power of reading in everyday life? That's motivation. 
The second part is frequency. Simply put, how often are you reading? And third, engagement. When you are reading, are you engaged in that process or are you a passive reader? And those three things, motivation, frequency, and engagement are the ways that we find the going. But how do you reach those students, especially when they have an iPad as an option, an iPhone, you know, social media? How do you um, inspire them to pick up a book instead of that phone? Yeah, that's a great question, too. Luckily, at RIF, we are uh, platform inclusive. So that's print books and digital books. We do have a digital book uh, platform called Skybrary. So even if students are into their tablet, they can engage in ebook reading. Of course, we want them to read printed books as well. So access, that's the key there is having access to books and having choice in the books. When you're given a choice in your reading material, you're more likely to want to read. And that feeds into that motivation and engagement as well. And Becky, let's take it back to you for a second here. What are uh, a couple of the biggest barriers that face public schools today, especially those that are Title I schools, um, that are you know, dealing with students who are facing economic challenges at home? Well, it's always going to come down to resources at some point, but which types of resources? Uh, I would say uh, the struggle with finding qualified teachers these days has made it a, a, another barrier that we've had to deal with. But for being able to provide quality professional development for our teachers to be master reading teachers, because you have to know what you're doing uh, in this area. And uh, so for the students, it's just going to be more about the resources again with reading programs perhaps in the library. We used to have reading programs where they would come and read books and earn points and actually earn incentives and rewards. But sometimes when the funding is not there, you're, you're cutting things like that first. Well, reading builds the confidence and the confidence rolls over into everything we do here at the school. Dr. Bailey, what about igniting, you know, the, the thrill of, of reading for an entire family? Does this need to be a family thing in order to get um, young children to read with the parents on board, obviously guiding their children, but maybe even reading themselves, reading to them in some cases. Absolutely. I started at a school where we called parents the primary educators. I don't think I fully understood that until I became a parent myself. But as a parent, you are the number one role model in your child's life. So when your child sees you reading, they are going to increase their value that they see on reading. And even if you yourself like to read on a tablet, Right. pointing out to your child what you're doing. I'm reading right now. They'll start to see the value of reading in everyday life. Thank you so much, Becky and Dr. Bailey, for your time. We really appreciate your time and, of course, your expertise. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. It has actually helped me out with my um, stuttering because I kind of stutter less than I used to because I'm now reading more and, and it's helped with a lot of that. And next I'd like to interview Jessica Jones, the middle school assistant principal at the Inspired Teaching Demonstration School in DC and a middle school advisory board member at Reading is Fundamental. Hi Jessica. Hi. Now you know firsthand um, the importance of having access to books. You see it almost every day. Tell me about that. Yeah, I think without access to books, it's really a road stop um, in the progress of a student's development, especially in the fundamental level of in order for us to really grow in our academic pursuits, we have to be able to research, we have to be able to read and look at texts and look at different sources and say, is this source credible? And the foundation of all that is, you know, really good uh, understanding and reading in general, but just literacy. You have, you're dealing with so many layers here, including just um, kids being able to see themselves and the literature and the, and the books they're reading. Yeah, I do work as a therapist as well. And commonly, when I talk to my families and my students, they are often looking for an outlet, but also someone to have a catharsis with about their experience. And often they can find those in books. But if you can't see yourself in that book, you can't see yourself in that narrative or relate to it, it becomes you know this distant, abstract thing. And it's really hard to grow and develop from that. Whereas lately, books have been really focused 
focus to try to make sure that all children are seen in them and that there are mirrors, sliding glasses, you know, windows to the soul in some ways. And to truly have a book that represents you allows that to be impactful and really hit home. And I'm glad that books are starting to go in that direction. And I'm able to see books where I see myself in the books. And I hope that the same is happening for children, you know, all around the world, honestly. And you say that helps with their social development. Yeah, 100%. The narratives that you hear in books are often little lessons that we can live through um, without having to experience them in our actual lives ourselves. And when they're able to see that narrative, connect with it, learn that lesson, they're able to grow from that and that helps them in any arena and it allows them to be more culturally developed. And also when it just comes, you know, talk about cultural awareness, history, all those things, especially for marginalized communities. 100%. If you go through your entire life, and you read a book and you go to class and you keep going and you never see yourself in that space or you're not able to truly connect with it. It is not going to hit as hard as a book that really says, you know, this is my life right here that I'm reading. How did this person get through this problem? How did they triumph in all of the things that they were going through? If they can do it in the book, I can do it in my life. And when you're able to see yourself like that, that's that's when those moments happen. So how do you get it to work in, in with your students in terms of getting them excited about books? Is it the book itself? I mean, how do you kind of make it all happen so they're excited to read these books? Yeah. I think the big prize word here is engagement. Mm -hmm. If you are not into it, if you don't think it's fun or interesting, we're like pulling teeth and nails to you know, get you guys to read these books, then they're not really gonna walk away with those aha moments. Mm -hmm. But you're able to engage the students with the test and see that they are really accomplished learners, that they can uh, you know, grasp the information, they can understand what they haven't before them, that you can do this, you know, this isn't hard, you're able to have more fun with it and you're into it a little bit more. So it's, the key kind of is the book. It has to be a book that they can, yeah. they can grab on. And also the format. Um, mm -hmm. If you're able to give it in a format that's easily digestible, those audio books, those graphic novels, that's how you get them young and, you know, really pull them into the idea of what, you know, books provide for you. And then after that, you know, it continue to grow and maybe the pictures start to fade out of the book and there's more words, <laughs> but it's to really get them at a young age to be interested in what books can provide for them and then really, you know, use that as a catapult for everything else. You know, I can tell you're very excited. Thank you so much My for pleasure. joining us. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. Thank you. Sinclair Cares is celebrating National Reading Month by supporting Reading is Fundamental and providing books to children and communities like ours. Donate to our virtual book drive. Just a $4 gift can ensure a new book finds its way into a child's hands. Please go to SinclairCares.com or scan the QR code on your screen to make a donation. You can make that donation and change the life of a child. Rift studies have shown giving children choice and access to their own new age-appropriate books is positively tied to improved reading behaviors, writing performance, language development, and academic performance in other subjects. Reading is Fundamental has the proven programs and resources to tackle the literacy crisis, but we cannot do it without you. Please help us provide more children with the joy of reading to build a foundation